Jadavian Clowney has finally become what we all hoped he could be. It's been four years and several knee surgeries since he was drafted first overall by the Texans in 2014, but now, at long last, he's made it. There's no more someday when it comes to talking about Clowney. He's dominant today, and that newfound dominance can be entirely owed to how hard he has worked to improve every aspect of his game. We all knew that Clowney was a phenomenal athlete coming out of college, perhaps even a generational athlete. But after watching just one game of tape on him at South Carolina, you also knew he had a long, long way to go before he was even remotely considered a polished product. He had only two moves in college, and one of them wasn't even good, and his hip flexibility and leverage were both so bad that you wondered if he could get any sacks at all without his freakish size and strength. I had never seen such an amazing physical specimen be so bad at bending around the edge and flattening his hips to the quarterback, and it was almost like he was allergic to finishing sacks. That was honestly because, at the time, he probably didn't know how to. Then, after Jadavian was drafted, a brand new Texans linebacker coach entered the picture, Mike Vrabel, who Bill O'Brien handpicked off the Ohio State staff to accomplish one primary goal above all others, to make sure their investment in Clowney paid off. I'll be damned if he did not hit that project out of the park, and it's probably one of the biggest reasons why Vrabel skyrocketed from a first-time position coach in the NFL to head coach of the Titans within just five years. Clowney in 2017 was a completely different player to the Clowney we saw just three seasons ago. He wasn't just an incredible run defender on the edges that would occasionally contribute on third downs. He was actually moving all over the front and using different techniques to succeed at all of those positions. I mean, sure, he still absolutely can set an edge against his own run like he used to, and by set an edge I actually mean annihilate the edge harder than any other linebacker I've ever seen in my life, but he's also much more than that now. He plays a wide nine and four-man fronts, he plays five technique and three-man fronts, he'll stand up at inside linebacker and blitz through the A-gap to ruin plays immediately, and he'll even play some three technique defensive tackle and rush the passer from the interior just because he can. I feel like people sometimes take his versatility for granted, but that's not normal. You don't see many players ever that can play outside linebacker, inside linebacker, defensive end, and defensive tackle all in the same series and be effective at every single position, but that's just what Clowney does. It's what makes him unique. There was a sack he got against the Ravens that I think exemplified that versatility better than anything. He's lined up as the three technique here in what initially looks like a six-man pressure package, but it's actually only a four-man package with zone drops on the back end. After the snap, Clowney squares himself to the left guard and then jab swipe combos to cross his face and keep that guard from engaging his chest. He has such a violent swipe that the guard never even had a realistic chance to slow him down, but now he's got to quickly get through the center as well who's sliding over to double team him. Watch how in one fluid motion he engages that center with a two-handed punch, extends and then locks out his arms to keep that separation and knock the center off balance, and then works back across his shoulder and pins him there in that position with the arm over move so he cannot recover. He went from being square to the guard, to pass the guard, to square to the center, to pass the center in seven steps. The old clowny could not even come close to the technique required to do that so fluidly when he's linking his hands to his feet, but the new clowny can. Old clowny also had a problem with learning how to use his hips to redirect his rushes and finish sacks, but new clowny? New clowny knows how to roll his hips as soon as he beats that lineman and point them straight at his target, the quarterback. This is a whole new ball player and a whole new problem that offenses are going to have to deal with. Old Clowney was an athlete. New Clowney is an absolute f***ing nightmare. There might not be a more qualified person on earth to talk about this evolution than Titans left tackle Taylor Lewan. They go way back with each other, and not just as AFC South rivals that go toe-to-toe -to -toe twice a year, but as college rivals as well. Lawan vs. Clowney in the Outback Bowl was one of the most hyped individual bowl matchups that I can remember in the last decade, and that game certainly did not disappoint. I'm sure you all remember the hit, after all. That was where Lawan got his first front row seat to what his future nemesis was capable of, and they have been linked together ever since. So when Clowney roasted his longtime rival for a sack in Week 4, the one tackle that knows him better than anyone, and an elite NFL left tackle at that, it spoke volumes about how far he has come. Watch him jab inside to bait out Luan's hands, and then disengage with a swipe outside to a one-arm stab. 
Clowney has about a half inch reach advantage on the wand, which believe it or not does make a difference, but he is compounding that reach advantage by using the one arm is longer than two principle. Meaning you can always outreach a tackle and maintain separation if you turn your chest and reach with one arm rather than squaring him up and reaching with two. Lawan cannot reach far enough to get in a solid counterpunch, and Clowney makes sure to keep his chest clear by using his offhand to control Luan's punch. From there, look at how Clowney finishes here. He's rolling his hips to the quarterback around the edge, and once Luan is leaning forward, desperately trying to recover, Clowney punishes that by yanking him to the ground face first. He takes advantage of Luan's forward momentum and balance and uses it against him, and then pays that off with a sack fumble that is recovered by Houston. They would score four plays later to take a 40 point lead. This is a totally different beast than the raw, injury prone rookie that everyone prematurely wrote off as a bust. Clowney is rushing with a plan now and even has a whole new bag of tricks for his oldest and toughest rivals. He's jabbing, swiping, stabbing, pulling, and rolling his hips to finish the sack all in one fluid motion, which to me, as someone who has closely followed and documented his career since he was just 19 years old, I mean, this progress is amazing to me. Clowney entered the league as one of those prospects that had analysts and coaches saying, man, if we can just get him playing to his full potential, imagine what he can be. And now we're seeing what he can be. He's one of those unicorns that actually learned how to properly use his physical gifts, and his success should be a model for how every franchise develops their young pass rushers. The Texans were patient, they believed in Clowney, they never gave up on him, and their rewards for that patience and commitment will be incredible. And to be honest, his rewards will be incredible as well considering he's due to be one of the highest paid defensive players in the league any day now. The evolution of Clowney has always been one of my favorite stories to watch, not just as a Texans fan myself, but as a fan of the sport in general, and I can't really express how proud I am to see him finally find success. This was a kid who had some of the highest expectations as a first overall pick that I can remember, and to see him go through absolute hell early in his career and emerge even better on the other side, I mean, that takes toughness and perseverance that very few people have. His career was declared over before it even began because of circumstances that were not under his control, and now with every sack, every tackle for loss, and every unbelievable highlight, he's making all of those talking heads eat their words. I respect the hell out of Jadavian Clowney, and he deserves everyone else's respect too. Whenever he signs his second contract, no matter how much money he's making, he's worth it. The Texans are in the middle of witnessing the evolution of something special. And I can say right here and now that the result of that evolution is worth every single dollar they've got left. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. Obviously, this one was a bit more of a passion project for me because I'm an unapologetic clowny fan, but I thought it was just about time that we recognize the road that he's traveled to get to this point, and he really does deserve every ounce of praise he gets. He's a truly special, special player. Now, uh, if you've jumped on board to support the growth and development of this channel recently through Patreon, I really wanna take a moment to thank all of you as well. I got a whole bunch of new patrons and subscribers throughout the draft season, and it, it still amazes me how supportive all of you are to help me do this as a living and kind of keep making content on a regular schedule. I, of course, have a whole bunch of other stuff planned throughout the summer and during next season and beyond and all that. And I have a few very special side projects in the works as well that I think you're going to enjoy, especially if you're a fantasy football player. But for now, just thank all of you so much. You guys mean everything to me and I would not be able to do this without you. I 100% honest, I could not do this without you guys. So with that, enjoy your Mother's Day weekend. I'll be back next week with another episode. And until then, later. Later.